this super special edition of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast. Wow. Today, we are going to have a clip show. Yes, we all love clip shows. Those are the best. We are going to have a compilation, if you will, of a bunch of videos in the Fix Writer Self-Sabotage series. If I put all the videos on here, um, it would be longer than an hour. I cut some stuff out of each of the videos. There's a bonus video that was after the first um, video that was a... It was kind of talking about the muse and a little more about my personal experience. A lot of my personal experiences I cut out of these videos to make it short enough to fit in the podcast. Another thing I did to make this fit was um, speed it up to 1.5. Now, that might annoy the fuck out of some of you, but I think it'll be okay. I think you'll get used to it like pretty soon once it starts going. I just had to speed it up or else it was going to be too long. And I, I need the files to be a certain size. And depending on how I compress the files... If they're too big when I compress them, then, like, the audio is so bad. And, in fact, in one of these videos, the audio is very bad because I recorded it on the patio at Starbucks, like, right next to the street. And the trucks and the buses were so loud going by, I had to do this, like where you pull the background audio out and it almost sounds like I'm in a tin can or underwater, but that's only like a four minute clip. So you, you'll be fine. Don't even sweat it. Okay. Um, so to talk about what the topics are in this, the first topic is going to, is called, uh, the rear view mirror. The second one is called, um, familiarity a word I still can't really say. Part three in here is called um, lack in time. Part four is called things we can't control. Part five, oh wait, no, that was part five. Part four is discouragement and distractions. And then finally, part six, the last part is called the taste. Those things um, will be uh, the things that I'm talking about on here. I think I'm going to add like little bumpers in between each bit uh, just because it might make more sense if you could tell it's a different thing and I'm not still talking about the same thing. So I'll, I'll probably do that. I don't know. Um, the next thing is um, I'm not going to do the back door plugs because I, this is, this is going to be too long if I keep adding shit to it. This will probably go out on Friday and um, that means Saturday is the Bombay Beach Lit Fest, and this will be the last day I get to tell you about it. So if you are in the Southern California area, get out to the Salton Sea at Bombay Beach for the Bombay Beach Lit Fest. See me on the panel talking about zines and culture and chat books, and I'm going to read some poems and hawk some books. So um, it's a free event. Be there. There's no reason why you should not go. And distance is not one of them. Whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. Anyway, um, I'm going to add this to a playlist. I will probably put the playlist up here as soon as I remember to do it. If not, it'll be down below. If you want to watch these clips in full, because, um, again, I cut a bunch out of these, and then there's actually an extra video in the playlist. If you struggle with self-sabotage... This is how you fix it. Um, I hope you enjoy this. If you like this kind of shit, let me know and I'll do more things like this. On with the schlow. But I talked to you guys about, I'm going to be doing a series of videos that hopefully will help you with your work and with your writing. And not only that, but like what happens with your writing after the fact. Like what are you going to do with your writing for you to be successful? Because a lot of you write all the fucking time. The problem that we run into is what the fuck do you do with it afterwards? Like the writing itself makes you feel good, makes you feel like you accomplished something. But because there is no what now with your stuff, you feel like you're not excelling. You feel like you're not um, getting to that next level. 
kind of thing. And so that's what this is going to kind of be about. The other thing with all of this is that I, myself, have been for the last few months going through some deep, dark blues shit, okay? That has not been a fucking secret, all right? So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking with you guys about is a lot of what I need to fucking do to get um, my shit taken care of. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking to you guys about is stuff that you're not going through alone. I'm going through this. Like, in a different way, I'm going through it. But this stuff is universal when it comes to writing. Because one of the problems I'm having, if I could be frank and honest with you guys here, since we're all friends and shit, is that when I get in the dark, deep blues, you know, I have a really hard time getting my work done. And not so much the writing, as much as all the shit that comes after, which is kind of what we're going to be kind of focusing on here. You can get away with writing a poem or two and then go, well, you know, I didn't get a lot done today, but I finished a poem or two. So I feel pretty good about that. But now what? But if you were writing a novel, if you were working on a short story, if you are putting together like a big nonfiction thing, like hitting this wall of like depression and self-loathing and all this other shit completely takes you out of the game, you know? And a lot of you who make plans, you're like, I'm gonna put out a book this year and I'm gonna self-publish it, I'm gonna put it on Amazon, I'm gonna send my manuscript out to agents and publishers, blah, 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 blah. You say all this shit, but when you either get the blues or life happens and you don't do those things, you feel failure. Like in every other walk of life that has nothing to do with art, especially art that you do mainly by yourself, when you hit that failure, you're usually like, oh shit, I didn't do this, I gotta do it right now. But for artists, what we do is we hit that wall and then we like just revel in it. And we're like, oh man, I fucked up. I fucked up. Well, that's that. Screwed the pooch this time. And you just sit in this, we all do it. And when I say you, I mean me too. Like we just sit in that, okay? And that's not healthy, that's not great. Let's not fucking do that. In order to figure out what the fuck it is that is happening, we have to figure out why this is happening and how to fix this thing so we can move on and either finish that book or send that manuscript out or just fucking create and then figure out what to do next. So there are a couple ways this goes and it comes down to the fact that we just focus on our failures. We focus on the past. We focus on what had just happened and we don't look ahead. And some of you might be going, well, you know, no shit, Sherlock, that's fucking brilliant. Like, here's a fucking trophy and shit. But if you actually thought about the thoughts you have when these things come up, when like, oh, you know, like, were you gonna put that book out? You're suddenly, you don't think about like, well, yes, you think about, I was. Shit, I was, I was gonna do that thing. And that becomes the focal point of your whole existence. The fact that you were going to do something and then that didn't fucking happen. Okay. There are quite a few different analogies we can use to help illustrate this. Um, but I heard one the other day that was pretty good. So we're going to use this. When you're in your car, okay, and you're going somewhere, your windshield is like the size of the fucking car. Okay. It's as wide as your goddamn automobile, right? But we have like mirrors. We have our side view and we have our rear view mirrors and stuff. And those are only like this big. Okay. And when something is that small, it's there for you to glance into and like recalibrate if that's what you have to do but this whole fucking windshield in front of you that's where you're going that's where you are and that's where like the road is going to take you as long as you're pushing forward and you're still fucking moving your rear view mirror that's just there to fucking look at for a second and make sure there's no fucking cops behind you you know what i'm saying so what i feel like a lot of us do is we will start staring in the rear view mirror and either start pining over it or like we're going to get into the things we see in that mirror in other videos. But we start worrying about it to the point where not only have we slowed the car down, but sometimes we have completely stopped the car. Sometimes our car is in fucking park. And I say this a lot when um, I have talks with a lot of you. It's easier to move a car that's in motion than it is to move a car that's in park. So let me say that again because uh, trash truck, you know what I'm saying? So... It's easier to move a car that's in motion than it is to move a car that's in park. So even if you're driving down the wrong road, like you took a wrong turn and you're driving, you can easily turn that car around and come back down or change course and take another road and get back to the road you're supposed to be on. If your car is in park, if the emergency brake is pulled, it's hard to get that car moving again unless you start the car, take the car out of park, take off the emergency brake and start 
actually moving. But for a lot of people, they put their car in park and they pull the brake and they're like, oh, wow, I'm stuck. And so then they get out and they push the car that's in park with the brake on and they're like trying really hard and nothing's happening. And they're like, Hoo! and they're like, well, shit, you know, I tried. I tried to get out of this muck and it's on fucking solid fucking asphalt and shit. I tried to get out of it, but, you know, can't fucking do it. Here we are. I don't know what else to do. OK, I guess I'll just wait for AAA. Didn't call them. Don't have cell service. Whatever. They'll show up. Somebody's bound to come down this road and help me out of this fucking problem. OK, that's what a lot of us do all the fucking time. It, it just is. So like being in some sort of forward movement is always easier to fix than doing not that thing. Wow, that was a stupid way to say that. But what I'm getting at is if we're using the windshield versus rear view mirror analogy, we need to obviously not stare in the rear view mirror. It's okay to glance at to make sure nothing happened and no one's behind you and the cherries aren't spinning and the popo ain't coming, you know, because we all know that's what rear view mirrors are for, to make sure the fucking cops aren't behind you when you're fucking going 20 miles over the speed limit. So what I want to kind of throw at you guys right now in this first little section of us spending way too much time looking at our failures and dwelling on our failures and dwelling on our past is that think about the project that you've been working on or the project that you think you're supposed to be doing right now, that you have told yourself, this is the project I'm supposed to be doing, that you're having a hard time accomplishing, okay? Look at that and ask yourself, is this really the time, the place to do this? Is this project really that important? And like, if you have to do a pro and con list, do a pro and con list. And then ask yourself, is there anything else I can do in this new year of 2024? That's not the year, sorry, 2024. Is there another project I can work on right now that I feel better about, that doesn't have me being dragged through the swamp of my past, that I could just get done and feel good about finishing something and then feel good about submitting that or publishing that? Is there anything that I can do now to give me a little victory so I can start focusing through the windshield and not into the fucking rearview mirror? Figure out if there's any project that you can work on right now that you feel like you can finish and publish however you want to do that and have it be something fresh that you're not constantly thinking about, oh man, this was supposed to be done last year. My life was supposed to be in a totally different place. Like, let's just fuck all that shit off. Like, this is right now. This is the new year. Everyone likes to have something happen on the new year. Change fucking course and focus forward and figure out if there's anything that you can do. And if there is, fucking jump into that. As soon as you feel that excitement, run with it and just fucking move. That is my biggest recommendation to everybody because that feeling of excitement from inspiration is so rare and it's so fucking important. And when those things happen, like, really just do not put those on the back burner. And if you want to write novels... Just try to fucking, just try to fucking hit some short stories right now. Just finish some amazing shit. Like have some wins in January. You know what I'm saying? Today we're going to go into more detail about our fixing or stopping art of self-sabotage. Familiarity. Oh, I fucking did it again. I've been saying this word in my head like over and over again. Familiarity. I'll just say it fast and you guys will know what I mean. Wow, that's a fucking hard word. That's like a collaborate. That's another hard word for me. Familiarity. There you go. This is why we self-sabotage, okay? Now, the stuff we're talking about in these, like, little self-sabotage things, it doesn't have to be for art. Like, this is, like, life lesson shit, but I'm not a fucking life coach, okay? I just do writing shit, okay? But, like, it's the same rules apply, you know? So, familiarity, what that means is, a lot of the times, we sabotage ourselves because we are more used to failure than we are to success. We already know how to handle failure, Success might be kind of strange to some of us, okay? So for instance, a good example of this is when you look at like football, okay? Let's, let's go some, to some sports analogies here, okay? At the beginning of the season, there are like whatever, however many fucking football teams, 30 or some shit, I don't fucking know. And all of those teams are wanting to win the Super Bowl, okay? And then like by January, the playoffs happen. What are there, like 12 teams left when the playoffs start? So all the rest of those teams, they lost, they're going home, okay? Then the playoffs happen, and every week, more teams go home until there's the Super Bowl, and there's two teams left, and one team wins, one team holds up that trophy, one team douses their coach with Gatorade, one team says they're going to Disneyland. The other team fucks off, okay? Now, I say it like this to illustrate the point that when you try, when you go for it, you will always lose more than you win. That's just how life is, okay? That's how statistics work. That's the odds, Okay, but just because you lose more times than you win doesn't mean that you should ever not want to win. Okay, now when I say win, I'm using this in the term of just success in general. 
okay? Another good analogy I like um, is from King of the Hill. And this goes, like, if you remember, little Bobby, he wanted to learn how to pick up chicks. And so he went to the coolest dude he knew, Mr. Boomhauer. And he's like, Mr. Boomhauer, can you show me how to pick up women? And he's like, okay. So he takes Bobby to the mall. And Bobby's all excited. He's going to learn from a master. He's going to learn how to fucking do this. And what he watches Boomhauer do is go up to a woman. And then he says something. The woman slaps him. Then he goes up to another woman, says something. The woman slaps him. And he keeps going up to women. And these women keep slapping him. And then Bobby's like, oh, shit. Like, you're just getting rejected a whole bunch. But in getting rejected a whole bunch, there will be one chick who's like, hey, that's kind of cute. I like that. Here's my number. Let's do the thing. You know? And so I feel like a lot of artists or people who want to be artists, the problem we have is that we know that rejection is going to come because it always does. Because that's statistics. That's the odds. So knowing that that's going to happen, we just go, well, I already know that's going to happen. So I might as well just like be rejected already before I even go. Because that way that's just one less step for me. Like why go through the motion? of submitting my stuff? Why go through the motion of putting my book out to see if it sells? Why go through the motion of promoting my work when I do it? When I already know I'm probably not gonna succeed at this, okay? That is the mindset that most artists have. But the more and more and more you do something, the more likely you are going to succeed, okay? So if that means you submitting your stuff, if that means you putting your book out, if that means you, I don't know, starting an Etsy shop or some other fucking thing, do that thing. And a lot of people are not going to buy your stuff. A lot of people are not going to look at your stuff. But for all those people that don't, there will be one person who does. And you just have to keep doing that. You have to keep putting yourself out there. And I know that that's a fucking like terrifying thing for a lot of us. But if you, well, like what's what's the saying like um you're not going to win unless you try you're not going to succeed unless you put yourself out there you're not going to gain any readers unless you put something out there for people to read you know you're not going to gain a shit ton of youtube followers unless you put videos out for people to watch and decide okay your job is to create the, the consumer's job is to find out if they like your shit that's just how it works okay now when we feel familiar with rejection, when we feel familiar with, I don't know, feeling like shit, it almost becomes a relationship, like, in and of itself, okay? Like, when you have been miserable for so long, you know that saying, misery loves company, like, miserable people like to be around other miserable people because it validates the fact that it's okay to be miserable. Now, if we're just talking about ourselves, when we have this, like, loathing inside of us that we're not good enough, when, if you've had that for a long time, when you finally decide you don't want to be like that anymore, it's going to feel like you're ending a relationship. It's going to feel like a bad breakup. Because even though that shitty, horrible feeling you had that whole time was there, it's familiar to you. It's comforting to know that it's there. Now, a lot of us probably don't think of it like that. But imagine, right now, imagine if you suddenly didn't feel like that anymore. If you suddenly had all the confidence in the world in your art and in the stuff you create and how you could get it out to people and how it would sell. Imagine that right now, okay? Now, a lot of you who did that probably got a little anxious. You probably were like, because that's a scary thing because it's different, okay? Like our whole lives, people in our lives, people who love us and who care about us, our whole life have probably said to us, oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, that's a pipe dream. Oh, you know, it's really hard to do that. You're probably better off flipping burgers or whatever the fuck it is they say. Okay, even though that comes from a good place, it's fucking damaging as fuck. And now what all of us have to do is try to figure out a way to like look past that and know that we deserve happiness, that we deserve success. But the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you're okay with letting go with the familiarity of that fucking constant rejection and that you're not good enough. You have to be able to let that go. You know, like you, I, I say this a lot, like you have to be your biggest fan. Okay. And the only person who's not letting you be your biggest fan is you. What would it feel like right now? Let's do this again. What would it feel like right now to be your own biggest fan? To think that everything you make is amazing. To have joy in creating and then have joy in consuming the thing you create. How would that feel? Now, some of you think that that's fucking crazy. Or it fills you with anxiety. There's a reason for all of this. And it's because you, if you felt like that, you need to let go 
of that familiarity with rejection, with like not being successful with the whole fucking thing. Once you let that go and you are free from that, you're, you could do whatever the fuck you want. So as like a little writing prompt right now, either write yourself a poem or write yourself a letter breaking up with your misery, with your self-loathing, with your self-sabotage, with your acceptance of rejection. Just tell yourself that you're fucking worth it and you know you're good, so you want to be happy. And then when you're done writing that, look back on it, read through it, and see if you were giving yourself any outs in there. Like if you if you were being kind of like wishy-washy with stuff. And then fucking, this is the one time you're going to hear me say this, revise that and be strong with how you say that and read it again. And then put that thing up somewhere. Put it up in like your office or whatever. Or if you're into like sigils and shit, fucking burn it. Have like a whole ceremony where you're breaking up with the thing that's holding you back. I know a lot of this sounds lofty, but we are primal creatures at heart. So a lot of times we have to do things like this that are more symbolic and more ceremonial to get our heads out of our asses and get the fuck out of our own way. Okay? Be fucking Boomhauer. Go out there and fucking swing and swing and swing. And like when you think about it, like the people with like, if you're a baseball fan, the people with the best batting averages, like their, their averages are like three something which means they strike out two thirds of the time, okay? The best fucking horses that run races and win races, they only win maybe a third of the time, okay? Winning is not guaranteed, but like you can't succeed unless you, like Bukowski says, get into the arena. Like unless you do the thing, you will never know. But just doing the thing isn't enough. You have to let yourself be free of that familiarity with fucking misery and fucking just not being successful. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, leave a comment down below and explain how you did this. If you want to actually share the letter to yourself or the poem to yourself, do that in the comments below. You know, fuck this shit. Like, we don't need this shit. We got shit to do. We got art to make and art to fucking show to the world. So fuck all that misery shit, okay? And fuck that self-sabotage. How do we stop self-sabotaging our fucking artistic everything? Can we figure this out? Is this something we can do, people? Come on. What we are going to be talking about is basically lack, all right, and what we decide to focus our energy on, okay? One of the things I hear from almost every single person who I talk to when they're having a hard time putting their books and shit together is there's this reoccurring thing, and it's something like, I don't have enough money to set aside to be able to write my book right now because, you know, I'm going to be working a bunch and, you know... Like, I'm going to need to take time off, you know, to work on this. And, you know, and then like the biggest one is um, I just don't have the time, you know. Um, and like in the Poetic Anarchy course, I've talked about this a bunch about how there is never time to do anything. You just have to do things. OK, I was talking to a woman this morning who wants to write a memoir. She wants to write her life story. And she said, I want to write it because I know like, my life has been totally crazy, and I know that this book will help people who have had some of the similar experiences that I've had. And then I said to her, I'm like, well, if you don't write it, it's not going to fucking help anybody, you know? This isn't really the same thing, but what's that saying? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I'm not saying that that's what this is, but it's the same kind of thing. Like, a lot of times, we want to write things because we think it will help people. Like, we think, like, oh, this is, like, kind of what I've been put here to do, you know? If people can learn from my mistakes... You know, they won't have to make the same mistakes I made. Or if people know that there's other people out there who have been through the same things as them, they won't feel so alone, you know? And this is all amazing shit to hope for and want to do for people. The problem lies, though, when your good intention is enough for you, okay? And you're just like, well, you know, I really want to do this. And when I do, it's going to fucking help people. But until then, you know, like shit. I'm even going to read because this is a message I've gotten from almost all of you. Almost all of you who write me asking me for help have said something along these lines here. This person whose name I'm not going to say, I mean, we were talking for a bit, but then she said this, she said, I guess just starting jotting things down again. I'm a procrastinating ADHD mom. I got to find time, LOL. So here's the thing, what she did here like, some of you will go, oh, she's giving excuses, okay? To an extent. But it's it's deeper than that, okay? So, first, she's downplaying what she can do, okay? Because basically, I said, you need to just write the book. And if you just need to write, like, short stories or even poems about each thing you want to write about, do that, okay? She says, I guess just starting jotting things down again, okay? So, first off, she's downplaying the writing of her book, 
Okay. How are you going to help people if when you talk about your book, you're talking about it like it's not that big of a deal and it's not that important. If it's going to help people, it's important and it should be looked at as if it's important. Okay. Then she says, I'm a procrastinating ADHD mom. I got to find time. LOL. So what she does right here is that she's giving herself an out. She procrastinates. Okay. So there's her out. You know, like if she doesn't get the book done, well, you know, she's a procrastinator. So that's okay. Um, I'm ADHD. So that's my future excuse. So I don't get this done. I'm a mom. That's, that's a way out right there. Okay. And then the dot, 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 I gotta find time. We'll get to that in a second. And then at the end, LOL, the LOL is the, the way to make that not seem important. The LOL is the, here are my excuses. So the fuck what am I right? We have to learn how to change how we speak about our art or our art will always be a second class citizen in our minds. It'll always be the thing on the back burner that never gets done. Okay. Now she says, I gotta find time. That is the thing that everyone always says. There's not enough time. There is never going to be enough time. She's writing me back right now. Shh, don't tell her we're talking about her. Here's the thing. Time, and again, this is in the Poetic Anarchy courses if you join the Anarchy crew. Time waits for no one. There will never be enough time for you to fucking do anything you want. Time never sleeps. Time will always continue to tick by. And you, every second that moves by, you are getting closer to your own death. Okay, if you want to accomplish anything in this world, you need to just fucking do the thing. Okay, type hard guys. You have to just fucking do it because there's never ever gonna be a time when time's like, oh, you know what? Fuck it, today I'm gonna put an extra eight hours in the day. You work on that book, you do what you wanna do. I'm a mom, okay? I'm a dad, I was a single dad, okay? Right now it'll be a thing like, well, you know, maybe when the kids get a little bit older, you know, maybe I could work on it then because just right now I don't have the time. I was talking to a woman a couple weeks ago and her excuse was she, she was moving. So she put her book on hold for a year while she moved and got the house set up. And then once she got the house set up, she even had an extra room that was going to be her office. Then she said, my office isn't set up yet. So once I get the office set up, yeah, that's when I'm gonna do it. Cause right now I don't have an office and I would really like an office, okay? And I said, well, why don't you just go in there and type? Well, because like, I don't have the desk I want and I really wanna like decorate it nice so I feel good. And so I'm doing this thing. Everything she's saying, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this, I can't do this thing unless I have all these things or you just fucking do the thing. You will always find a reason to why you can't do something. But the only thing that will make you do something is if you fucking do it. And you don't need reasons for that. You just do it. Like, okay, so you're a mom, you have ADHD, you procrastinate. There's all these things against you, okay? You don't have time. Do you shit? Do you? Because if you're shitting, I'm assuming like you're not cooking dinner while you're shitting. I'm assuming you're not like taking your kids to school while you're shitting. I'm guessing there's things that don't happen when you're in the bathroom and you're taking a shit. So if you have that time and some of you are going, well, yeah, but I use that time to check Twitter and Facebook and maybe watch a couple reels on the damn TikToks. Okay, those things aren't important. So write your fucking book. Even if it's just a couple lines at a time. You know, I don't know how many shits you take a day, but I'm assuming at the end of a year, you could have a substantial amount of stuff written if you wrote every time you took a shit, okay? So you can always make time. When me and my daughter were living in North Hollywood and she was like, I mean, I fucking homeschooled my kid and I'm not trying to go, I'm better than you, Nana Nana Boo Boo or anything like that. But like, I would wait until my kid was done with being the kid stuff. And then I'm like, okay, eight o'clock, you gotta be in your bedroom. You don't have to go to sleep right away. You can like watch TV, but you have to be in bed and you have to like be ready. Cause at nine o'clock I'm coming in and I'm turning everything off and you're, you're asleep. And then from nine o'clock till I passed out, usually around three in the morning, I was fucking clanking those fucking keys. You know, sometimes I would get up really fucking early if I went to bed early and I would try to get writing done before my kid got up. You know, it's just like, if you want this, you will make this happen, you know? And some of you might be going, oh, but you're kind of being a dick about this and da, 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 da. How many things have you made happen because you wanted them? Whether it was like, you really wanted that new top or you really wanted that vacation or you really needed a new car or you really um, needed to get your kids something for fucking karate or fucking soccer practice or whatever. You do the things you have to do to get the things done that you need. But if you keep looking at your writing and focusing on lack, whether it's time, money, patience, whatever. If you keep focusing on that, that's all you are going to get, okay? Again, this turns into one of those big fucking like woo, like if you focus on abundance, you will have abundance. That sounds kind of cheesy, but there is something to be said about that. 
if you live your life with a poverty fucking mindset, you will always be in poverty. Fake it till you make it. There is something to be said about that. And again, like I can't remember who the fuck I was talking to about this, but Warren Buffett, Someone asked Warren Buffett, what's the best investment you ever made? And he said, any investment that was an investment in myself. If I ever invested in myself, I knew it would pay off. That's the only investment that I knew would always work. So invest in yourself, give yourself time, give yourself the money, the space, the whatever the fuck it is. You just have to decide to do that. Time, there, there's never going to be enough time. You have to make time your bitch by getting more things done than time thinks it can allow you to, okay? I'm not trying to do some like tough love shit on you guys here. But this is the biggest problem. That's why every fucking writing book in the world will have all this fucking information. But all of the books, all of them say this one thing. Ass and chair, hands on keyboard. You have to actually sit down and do it. Do you know, especially in LA, do you know how many people have great ideas for a book or a movie or something? Oh yeah, I'm going to make this movie. I got this great idea for a script. I got this great idea for a book. It's all up in here. I just need to put it down on... Yeah, that's the problem. Every single motherfucker on the planet has an idea for something because every single person on the planet has read a book or watched a TV show or seen a movie. We understand the process. We understand beginning, middle, end. Okay? But the thing that makes writers from consumers of entertainment is the sitting down and fucking typing. You have to make yourself do that. You have to make the time. You have to make that happen. If you focus on the lack of time that you have to do something, you will never get anything done. If you keep thinking, oh, there's just not enough time in the day, there will never be enough time in the day. There will, there will be less time in the day if you keep that up, okay? This year, we got an extra day. It's fucking leap year. That's, that's time giving you a fucking cookie. 24 fucking hours. How are you gonna spread those hours out through the year? Figure it out, okay? So what I want you guys to do right now is write a list of all the things that keep you from doing the things you need to do. Write a list of all the things that keep you from writing. Look at that list and look at the lack in that list and figure out ways to eliminate each one of those things. If you'd like to, when you're done with that list, put it in the comments down below and what you're gonna do to fix that. What I'm gonna try to do here at Starbucks as it's starting to rain, I'm trying to stay off the road while the street sweeper's coming and I was gonna try to get some work done here and then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, self, let's do the next video in the self-sabotage series. Whereas my self-sabotage might be sitting at a metal table during the rain. So we'll see how that goes. There are two things that I want to talk about today and they both start with the letter D. So the two things are discouragement and distraction, the, the double Ds. Typically, the things that discourage us are not even big things. They are very, very small things that we take way too personal and like way too internalized. Yeah. Let's say you are excited to put out your new book and you do a post about it on Instagram or Twitter or wherever the fuck you go. You don't get a ton of likes on it and you don't get people completely losing their shit over the fact that you're gonna put out a book. Instead of you just going, oh, well, I guess I need a little more excitement for my post. You say, nobody wants to read my book, I'm not very good. That's not at all what has happened. And that's not at all what anyone was trying to make you feel like, but that's how we take that. So when we hear these things that aren't somebody telling you an exact thing, we add all of the other things. We fill in all the blanks to make it sound like there is actually something that these people are either upset about or that they think very minutely of what the fuck it is we're doing. Okay. So there's one. Another one might be something like you get your like poem accepted in a magazine or an online journal or something. And you're like, oh my gosh, dude, my followers are going to skyrocket. My book sales are going to go up, all this other shit. The journal comes out, you post about your poem, not a whole lot of engagement, but you also notice that you're not really gaining any followers. You notice that your book sales haven't really gone up at all. And then God for fucking bid, you lose a follower on whatever social media thing you're on. And then you automatically go, oh, well, I lost that follower because they didn't like my mom and they're, they're done. All this other shit. All this other shit is small potato shit. You will not even remember like what you saw to make you so upset in a week, okay? But that one little thing is going to be enough for you to tell yourself that you shouldn't be doing this thing anymore, okay? And that is where we are sabotaging our shit, okay? That's all in our head, that's all us. Some of us might even be a little more, um, I don't wanna use the word crazy because that's kind of fucking harsh, but some of us might be a little more along the lines of you wrote something and you weren't really feeling good about it when you wrote it. And you're just like, mm, well, this is what it is. And then you say that horrible phrase that nobody should ever fucking say. And you say, well, I guess I just don't have it anymore. I guess I'm just not that good. It's so fucking depressing. I hate doing this shit for ourselves, guys. It's awful. None of us like it. So basically, don't do this shit to yourself, okay? Think of it like this. Like, if you read poetry, I'm sure there is a 
poet out there that you really like and you get a collection of their work and you read it and there's a, a few bangers in there that you love and then every once in a while you'll read a poem and you're like god damn that really wasn't that good and you're just like mm -hmm. but the only thing you do is turn the page and read the next one or if it's a short story collection okay like you read all these really good stories and then you'll find one that just isn't that good but you never say to yourself after reading that one that isn't that good oh this writer doesn't have it anymore they should stop when stuff like this happens okay now i don't want this to be a pick yourself up by the bootstraps kind of thing because if i'm honest i don't even know what a fucking bootstrap is all right but it's more of a thing where like whenever you feel like that whenever you feel like you're dumb or something the only thing you can do is either step away for a minute and just don't worry about it and then the next thing you do is start again and just start writing something new just get yourself back up on the horse one thing that i think is really healthy to do as far as um, like your follower count your email list growth and all this other shit is do not look at it every day the best thing to probably do i would say a month but more likely than not it'll probably be easier to do this if you just do it every week but i would say do it every month if you can do it and once a month, you look at what your numbers are. And then don't look at that again. Write those numbers down so you remember what they are. And then go back the next month and see if there's growth, if there's stagnation, or if you're losing people. And then think about, like, okay, so what are things I can do to grow this? Because just so you know, too, stagnation is just like losing people. You always want to be growing, okay? So instead of getting down on yourself about why you're stagnant or why you're losing just think about how you can grow and make a list of ideas you have to make your shit grow and then for the next month focus on that thing so now the, the next thing here is getting distracted like i am right now so distractions so like most of these things here are like things along the lines of like, social media for sure the thing that i am going to recommend everybody do okay, is making a list i'm big on lists i love lists lists are the coolest things ever so um just make a list of like every day are you on social media and if so how long are you on that um every day are you watching my videos <laughs> and if so how long are you watching those um something like that think about too like with like the people in your life the people you surround yourself with or the leeches the people who just like come by and suck your fucking soul out um, when i lived in north hollywood i lived in this court every fucking day many times throughout the day I would be working, I'd be just sitting at my computer typing, and motherfuckers would just walk into my house. Because So it got to the point where um, I, I was like complaining about this shit and everything. And one of my neighbors got me this like neon sign to hang in my window. And I can't remember what it said. It said some shit, I don't remember exactly. But um, it said something, and the deal was, if I had the sign on it, it would tell everyone in the building and in the court um, not to fuck with me because I was doing shit. And then people stopped paying attention to it because after a while, I started just leaving it on. <laughs> and then they started noticing that, like, they would walk by and look at my window and just see me chilling. And um, the light was on, but I wasn't working. And so then they just kind of gave up on that, too. But for a while, it was a really good idea. But you need to make sure that the people in your life know that you have shit you have to do. And if they care about you, they will give you the space you need to be able to do these things. Another thing I would say would be habits and, and the Anarchy Crew videos. Um, we talk about this a few different times about um, habits and rituals and a lot of times um, we have habits that take us away from what it is that we're doing okay now with that said making a habit only takes like 30 days okay and if you do something every day for 30 days your brain is very it's very easy for your brain to like make sure that you continually do that thing so if any of these habits that you have keep you from pursuing your dreams then you have to decide oh shit do i need to actually break these habits and then that's a whole other fucking thing we're talking about here now some of you might be going how does this have anything to do with self-sabotage here's the deal if you are spending too much time on social media that is you fucking yourself from doing the thing that you need to do if you allow people to come into your space and keep coming in and spending time with you and distracting you from what you're doing if you allow this to happen that is you self-sabotaging the shit you need to do in order to get your shit done Okay. And if you are, you have certain habits that keep you from getting your work done and you don't do anything about it, that is you self-sabotaging yourself. So like I said before, what you need to do is make a list. Okay. And now this list is how often are you on social media? Because your phone will usually tell you at the end of the week, like you could set it up to tell you how much screen time you're using. Okay? And then it'll even tell you like what apps you're using that fucks you up on that. 
Uh, another thing is make a list of the people who either call you, who text you, who show up at your house, whatever, who are always needing your attention. Make a list of those people and write down how often they're doing this and how much time is actually spent with these people. And then depending on what your habits are, do the same with that. Look at all this stuff and add up how much time that is and actually visualize how much time you are fucking yourself out of getting your work done. And that number should astonish and shock the shit out of you, okay? Once you do that, you need to figure out ways to cut that shit back. And even if it's a thing where there's just one day a week where none of these things can affect you, like no phones, no nothing, no people, no shit, then just start with that. It doesn't have to be huge strides, but you need to give yourself a fighting chance to do the things that you want to do, okay? So if you have any like uh, thoughts on this or ideas or um, things that I may have missed in this, um, or if you just want to share the things that are distractions and the things that discourage you, leave it in the comments down below. So what we're going to go over today is, yes, we're going to focus on things that you can't control because focusing on things you can't control is a horribly stupid fucking thing to do. But I feel like we all do it because focusing on the things we can't control makes us feel better because then we have something to blame that isn't ourselves when things do not go right. You know what I'm saying? So I had a really good conversation on a podcast the other day and the guy who was interviewing me was talking to me about how for years he has been submitting his work to agents and publishers, getting super pissed off that his work isn't getting out there, not understanding why they won't accept his stuff. And he was coming up with all these like reasons, all these crazy reasons why um, he was getting rejected all the time. A lot of times you're getting rejected because it was the wrong thing on the wrong day. And that just isn't the place for you at that moment, you know? I know that sounds weird, but there's a lot of agents and there's a lot of publishers who the people who actually make the decisions hardly ever see anything that comes in. And most of the stuff that gets read is stuff by like interns. If the intern thinks something's good, they'll push it along to the editor to look at because the editors don't have time to look at tons and tons of shit. Like you're basically, all of us writers who have been doing this for years and years and years are basing our future on like some like 18 year old college kid. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but if I were to just go up to you and take you to any random first year literary program and just started pointing at 18 year olds and say, okay, which one of these people do you want to decide your future? You would probably fucking laugh at me. But for those of us who only submit to agents and publishers, that's exactly what you're fucking doing. When you don't get the results you want, you get really disheartened and pissed off and like there's no other way to do it. And you focus on that shit. Or you can just put your shit out however you want to do it on a website or on Amazon or make chat books or do whatever and sell your shit yourself and see what the market thinks of your work, okay? Or you can just be like, oh, the man doesn't want me. Like, I don't know what's wrong. Because a lot of times you don't get letters back saying, this is why we don't like your work because of this, 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 and that. You usually just never fucking hear from him again or just get like a form letter. Those don't help you like hone your craft or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? So focusing on that is a little rough. Other things that you can't control would be, and this kind of goes back to a lot of other things, but if you're like, um, like back to comparing, like if you're comparing like your earnings to someone else's earnings, you can't make somebody else not sell books, okay? There's plenty of readers for all the writers who are out there. And there are more readers than writers out there, okay? Everyone's got a place. You just have to do it. Leave some things in the comments below of things that you think are things that you worry about that you know you can't control, but you still worry about it anyway. Another thing would be like time. Like you worry that there's not enough time in the day to do something. So instead of doing the thing and sitting down and writing, you're freaking out just like, oh, there just isn't enough time. I can't possibly get any writing done in this amount of time. Or you could just try to get as much done as you can. Like think of every excuse you make to keep you from reaching your dreams and achieving your goals and try to just think about it logically and say, is this a logical reason for me to put my future on hold? Is this something that is worth me not doing a goddamn thing about? And just see, because a lot of times if you look at it like that, you'd be like, oh, I'm being kind of fucking stupid right now. Another thing you can do too is think about like when you come up with an excuse as to why you can't do something, think about it if somebody were to come to you and give you that same excuse for why they're not doing shit, what would you say to them? Because we're our toughest critics. We're our hardest fucking people here. But if somebody were to come to you and go, you know what? I just don't have enough time to write. You would probably go, oh, well, why don't you wake up earlier or stay up later or like do it on the toilet or do it on your lunch break? You would have an answer for somebody else, but for some reason, when we have these problems ourselves, we cannot talk ourselves into fixing them. You know what I'm saying? So um, that is just one of these things. So let me know down below what are the things that you worry about that you cannot control. And um, if you have a way to fix it, leave that down below as well, okay? Because honestly, just not doing that would be a good way to fix it. But some of you are way more articulate and thoughtful than I am, so you come up with really good ways of doing shit. So let me know what those are.
today we are going to finish off our writer self-sabotage series with the thing that i think fucks everybody right in the ass whenever anything starts going well for you okay and what that thing is that creates our self-sabotage okay the last step of self-sabotage before we start spiraling back out of control from the beginning and working our way back through all this stuff again is tasting a little tiny bit of success now some of you will be like what are you talking about like th like that would never happen like what do you like that's not a thing it is 100 percent a thing it happens to every single person i've ever known it's happened to me so many times that it's hard to keep track of okay in any field now check this out i've said this before all the stuff that i'm talking about on these things it does not have to be focused just on writing this can be applied to writing to music to film to art of any kind painting sculpting or whatever but it can also be dating it can also be your day job it can also be your relationships with others okay it could just be your fucking relationship with money okay like it's nuts how all of this stuff comes back around and what it always comes back down to is the fact that most of us do not think we deserve good things in life so we come up with reasons, we come up with excuses, and then we place obstacles in our path and then accept the fact that they're there, even though they're usually by our own doing. Us creative types are very, very strange creatures that do things really fucking silly, okay? So let's talk about this uh, tasting a little bit of success, shall we? The first thing you do when something you do has a little bit of success. Now, success is a fucking relative term. Success to one person might be something totally different to another person. The thing that brings all of this together is how we act when we think that we have tasted success so whatever that is to you it could be putting your book out it could be making a couple bucks on a book it could be breaking even on a book it could be getting a review of your book it could be anything whatever you deem to be successful is when this will kick in okay and you have to know that this is going to happen and so when you see this you need to pump the brakes okay the first thing that happens when you taste a little bit of success is you automatically cool your jets. You automatically stop doing all the shit you were doing. You're just like, oh. Would you look at this shit? Okay? Now, there's a couple things here that make all of this kind of okay and kind of not okay. The first thing is, it's okay to celebrate. Celebrate your successes. Okay? I, for one, am really bad at this. Whenever I do anything, I immediately start working on the next thing. Because I, I don't know what it is. I just, I've always felt like I don't have time to revel in something good that happened. I need to immediately start the next thing to make sure I can do that again, even though I never relish the thought or the results of anything like that. And that is bad, and that is something that I am working on. But a lot of people, what they will do is they will celebrate the awesome thing that happened for a little too long. Too long to the point where it's almost like they forget how to do the stuff that got them the success in the first place. And they're just a lot more apt and excited to just do the high fives you know so that is something and again all of this is relative you will know how long celebrating something good that happened is going to be able to go for you like some of you it might be a week some of you might go you know what i'm taking a month off and to just fucking pat myself on the goddamn back some of you might be okay this weekend i'm gonna party like i'm dying tomorrow and then on monday back to the grindstone and some of you might be like me and go oh my god that was alcohol what am i doing now and then you immediately start going into the next thing it is totally different, but don't get so hung up on the celebration that you lose all the fire and you lose all the steam and you lose all of the momentum. Momentum is huge. Losing momentum, ugh. If you lose that momentum, it is so hard to get back. It just is. You have to keep pushing that shit, okay? This one is probably huge. Another reason why tasting a little bit of success freaks us out, and I think this is where I have fallen into a lot, is that success is unfamiliar for a lot of us, okay? So especially if you're a creature of habit, okay? So if you obtain a little success, it's something new, it's something different, it's fucking scary, people start treating you differently, um, you start kind of seeing yourself differently, and then that scares you. You don't wanna get too full of yourself and everything like this. So what we end up doing is retreating back into what we were before, not only before the success happened, but before we did the things to make the success happen. We regress way far back, and we do that because it's familiar. It's like an old friend. It's our fucking misery. It's our fucking heartache. We know that so much better than we know happiness and joy and success and all this other shit. So coming back to our old friend, there's a safety in there. Even though like you're miserable, you're really down, you're depressed, you understand that and you know that and you've lived through that. It's just like going back into an abusive relationship. 
you know, because being without that relationship is fucking scary. You know what I'm saying? And this is the exact same thing. And um, I do this a lot. I do this a lot. And seriously, I, I've been in therapy now for what? Fucking like this time. Um, shit. Seven or eight months now. And I'm still working on this shit. I'm still trying to get this idea that I deserve happiness. I deserve success. And it's okay. It is a little scary. Especially when it's heights I have not reached. But it's okay to be there. It's okay. I, I belong. Like there is no um, imposter syndrome here. Like... I am welcome here, just like you are welcome here, okay? You are not an imposter, but for some reason, it is so easy, and it can happen like that. As soon as you flip that switch, it's so, you're gone. You're already there, and it's so hard to convince yourself to keep moving forward and to go back up to where you were. It's fucking crazy. We are fucking complex, weird fucking little rat traps up in here, guys. If you're unsure if this is how you are, okay, if you're unsure about how this works. Think about the things that you do in your life. When you diet, do you ever start a diet and the diet's working and then all of a sudden the diet's not working anymore? So instead of trying to tweak the diet, you just stop it all together. And then you go back and then you start putting weight back on and you're like, oh my God, this sucks. Da, 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 da. Um, maybe exercise is the same thing. Like you're exercising a bunch, you get results and then the results aren't happening as quick as they were. And instead of pivoting and trying to figure out the best way to move forward, you just stop all together. I don't know for those of you who are like corporate motherfuckers, like if you ever had a job, got promoted, and thought you were like hot shit, and then all of a sudden you are now in your new promoted position, and you have no fucking idea what to do, and you start panicking, and then you get fucking demoted and stuff like that. Like, that's kind of a crazy example, but it's the same kind of thing. Like, we get all excited about this shit, and then the second something doesn't seem like it should be working that way or something like that, we immediately go, oh, I don't deserve this, Jesus Christ, I'm out. I'm gonna go back to fucking pain and misery because I know that, and me and pain and misery are so tight. Like, that's okay. So this is probably, and the only real way to stop this is it's going to happen. So you have to recognize it when it happens. The best way to stop sabotaging your career is to have self-awareness, to be able to sit outside of yourself and look at the situation and look at your situation as if you're looking at a friend about to make a horrible mistake. Because like when we're in our own situation, it's hard to see the forest through the trees, okay? So try to step out of yourself and look at you in the situation and think to yourself, if my friend was doing this, what would I say to them right now? And really that's the only way we are going to be able to continue because a lot of us are probably never going to be able to tell ourselves that we do deserve this and mean it and believe it. Like a lot of us have like hurt that is so deep and so ingrained into our fucking soul, into our psyche that just like watching a video here and there, doing some work here and there is not gonna be enough to fix that. Okay, so stepping outside and looking in, it's going to be the only way that you are going to be able to objectively look at your life and look at your work and decide what to do next. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You have to be self-aware. And if you don't want to be self-aware, this is a horrible advice and I don't want to say it, but like I don't know another way of saying this. If you don't, if you do not want to be self-aware about yourself, try to at least be self-aware of your work and then maybe later like get into some therapy and work on like being self-aware of yourself and ways to help fix those wounds and stuff like that. I guess the last thing I'm gonna say about this before I forget is if you're ever unsure that what you're doing is self-sabotage, always look at what you're doing and ask yourself, is doing this growing my business? Is any of this growing my brand? Is any of this growing my work? If the answer to that is no, and worse, if the answer to that is actually this is damaging all of this stuff, then that is when you have been sabotaging yourself. You always want growth. You always want expansion. Stagnation is death. Like I've said that a million fucking times. You always want to be growing. And growth is the only way to know for sure that you're not sabotaging yourself. Okay? So I hope to God that this series was helpful for you guys. Okay? So with all that said, I wish you all the best. I know you can do it. You're awesome. You deserve this. Let me know down below what you think or if you have any other questions about the stuff we've been talking about in this series. Type hard, everybody. Always grow, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Gary Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate that. Love you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew and Gary Crew, just hit the join button and leave this video. If you'd like to become a member of Patreon, you can head over to the link down below. I'll take you guys well. Thank you.